Delhi, India's national capital. There are many suburbs in Delhi which are famous throughout India, such as Chandni Chowk, Lodi Garden, Central Secretariat, and Kartavya Path. One among such famous areas situated in Delhi is Mayapuri, which is an industrial locality known for its metal recycling and scrapping business. Metal recycling and scrapping involves buying things from users who no longer find them useful and extracting the metal and other components from such items which can be further sold to another party for repurposing or recycling. While it's often considered unhygienic and possibly dangerous job, high metal prices can dictate large financial returns which is why it is a lucrative business for many. Hundreds of small as well as big shops exist in Mayapuri which engage in the metal recycling and scrap goods business so much so that Mayapuri is considered the junk metal capital of India and even giant containers of scrap are imported here from across the world everything was going well in Mayapuri until April 2010 when the residents of Mayapuri and entire India were shocked to hear this tabahi aur barbadi hamesha bin bataye hi dastak deti hai दिल्ली के मायापुर इलाके में हर ट्रेडर्स हैड टू शट शॉप्स वो तो गैस के बारे में सबकी डर है जी बाहर के पार्टी भी नहीं आ रही यहां काम धंधा भी ऐसे ठप पड़ा हुआ है देयर इज द रिस्क ऑफ द रेन्स ब्रिंगिंग द टॉक्सिक सो स्क्रैप मार्केट व्हाट इज द अवेयरनेस लेवल्स एंड द मेजर्स ऑफ मॉनिटरिंग वेल दैट इज अ ट्रेजेडी व्हिच कुड हैव बीन प्रिवेंटेड इफ दे हैड यू नो इंफॉर्मड एवरीबॉडी The 1903 Nobel Prize in Physics was awarded to three people: Henri Becquerel, Pierre Curie, and Marie Curie. Their contributions: the discovery of the natural phenomenon of radioactivity. Radioactivity is the process by which an unstable atomic nucleus loses energy by emitting a particle or energy. This process is also called radioactive decay. For example, consider a radioactive element cobalt-60. Cobalt-60 emits an electron and converts into an excited state of another radioactive element, nickel-60, which then further emits gamma rays and turns into stable state of nickel-60. This property of cobalt-60 to emit high-intensity gamma rays, along with the fact that it has relatively long life compared to other sources of gamma ray, makes it suitable for use in industries where gamma rays are needed. One such use of gamma rays is to kill living organisms in a process called irradiation. Applications of this include the sterilization of medical equipment, the removal of decay causing bacteria from many foods, and the prevention of the sprouting of fruit and vegetables to maintain freshness and flavor. This gamma ray irradiation is commonly achieved through a device called a gamma cell or gamma irradiation chamber. Such irradiators are being extensively used in various universities, academic and research institutions for research and development purposes. They are also used in hospitals and blood banks for irradiation of blood and blood products or components for clinical and research purposes. These units mainly house either cobalt-60 or any other radiation sources. In 1969 a department from the Delhi University purchased one such gamma cell from a Canadian company called Atomic Energy of Canada Limited. Authorization for its operation had been given in January 1970 by the government at the time. As per rules the university gave an undertaking that there would be no sale or transfer of this equipment. For a couple of years thereafter the university was in communication with the government agency concerned in connection with the working of the device. However years after that it seems that the device was not being used that often and after some time it had become abandoned In February 2010 the university authorities decided to sell off the gamma cell unit to scrap dealers from Mayapuri in violation of the undertaking that had been given while buying the unit which stated that the unit will not be sold or transferred The scrap dealers who bought the unit dismantled it and in the process were exposed to the radiation from the remaining cobalt 60 which was present in the unit. The accidental public radiation exposure resulted in 7 radiation injuries and 1 death. While 4 patients who were exposed to medium doses survived with intensive or supportive treatment, the patient with the highest exposure died due to acute respiratory distress. and multiple organ failure on day 16th after hospitalization Delhi police later on filed a charge sheet against six Delhi university teachers for criminal negligence in the radiation caused by cobalt 
This was an incident which hardly had any precedence in India except the Bhopal gas tragedy which was similar but not the same. 